this is our third lesson on chemical reactions. Hopefully at this point you can clearly differentiate between chemical and physical changes. You should feel very comfortable writing and balancing those equations. You'll get some more practice today. And also what we're going to start today and finish up with later this week is classifying and predicting chemical equations. You will see that there are six different types of reactions. We will explore probably the four easiest today, and then we'll get into the harder stuff later in the week. But with practice, I feel very confident that you will master this concept. I usually find that the quiz grades are very high, as well as your test grades for this particular chapter. The first type of chemical reaction we've already talked about because we talked about it the other day when we balanced those more complex reactions. So the first is combustion. Combustion is exothermic. How would you recognize an exothermic reaction? That side is correct. The right side. Energy will be on the right side of the equation in an exothermic reaction, either written as energy, the quantity of energy, in this case 803 kilojoules. Kilojoules is a unit of energy. Or you could indicate the delta H of the reaction, and in this case it would have to be negative for exo. Exo, negative. In these two examples shown here, they both represent that general equation. You're going to have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen gas. Remember we talked about the other day that oxygen is a diatomic element. And your products in these two reactions will always be CO2 and water. In the first example shown, we have methane reacting with oxygen gas to generate CO2 and water. In the second one, we have octane, a chief component found in gasoline, reacting with oxygen gas, and again, the same two products. And this is one of the reasons why you don't smoke or leave your engine running when you pump gasoline, highly exothermic, and you don't want any type of explosion. Also, if you pump gas, it does say something about if a fire starts, don't pull the um, nozzle out of your tank, just run away. So I did happen to notice that when I pumped gas yesterday and many of you are starting to drive, so please be careful. The way you will see this type of question is it will say classify the reaction predict the products, and then balance the equation. You always start with classifying because once you figure out what type of reaction you have, then you can predict the products and finally balance the equation. You have a high comfort level with balancing already, so it's just a matter of predicting. You can predict once you classify. So in regard to the classification aspect, Whenever I see a hydrocarbon and oxygen or an oxygen derivative of a hydrocarbon and oxygen, what will always be your products? CO2 and H2O. H2O. So those will always be your products in any type of combustion reaction. So in each of these examples here, it's easy to classify at this point because you've got all the same types grouped together. It'll be a little trickier when we mix them all up, but you'll be able to do it. So in the first one, this is already written in your notes. In regard to classifying, we know that this is a combustion reaction. 
What are always the products of a combustion reaction? CO2 and H2O, good. And then just as we did the other day, we're going to balance that equation. And I know, Will, you said you were asking about the 2x plus 1, and the last two examples involved that, so we'll hit that. In the next one, Same approach. You classify it is combustion. What are the products of combustion? CO2 and H2O. Good. And you should have a high comfort level with the balancing at this point. As we talked about the other day. The other two balancing will take a little slower because you did indicate that you want more practice. How do I know this is a combustion reaction? Hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen gas, your products are always? And this is the one that you were talking about, Will. You've got four C's, four as a coefficient for the carbon dioxide. 6 H's, 3 as the coefficient for water. Will, how many O's on the right? Eleven. 11 is correct. You have 8 here. And three here is 11 O's. <coughs> Here's where you have two times something, so the 2x plus one more here. If there were a subscript here, that would be the number you placed here. So if there's a one, there's one. If there were two, you'd put two. If there was a three, you'd put three. A four, you'd put four, etc. This is always this subscript times the coefficient you're looking for is equal to the total. 2x is equal to 10, so x is equal to 5. Balanced. I'm going to let you try this last one to make sure you've got it. going to flip screens because I want you to try it. It's the one at the top if you don't have your notes or Chromebooks in front of you.
Ready to check? Yes, yes? Yep. Um, the balancing, yes. The classification and prediction, no. But it's just more good balancing practice. Sure. Um, did you initially have the four teams here? Yes. Okay. Did you have 42 O's on the right side? Yes. Okay. At that point, it's two times some coefficient, which I'm calling X, plus the one O that's here set equal to the total on the right side. So I had 2X plus 1 is 42. I subtract 1 from both sides, I get 2x is equal to 41, and I initially would have had 41 halves here. But you can't have a fraction as a coefficient, so what do you multiply every coefficient by? 2 is correct. So you get 2, 41, you multiply each of these by 2, and both of those coefficients is 28. Is that better? All right. And for your quiz, I would go back and practice these. You know I gave you one of them. And like I said, if there's a 1 there, it's plus 1. If there's a 2 there, it's plus 2. If there's a 3 there, it's plus 3. We can do some more balancing at the end if you want to. All right. The second class of reactions is oxidation. Oxidation is similar to combustion in that one of the reactants is oxygen gas, O2. Combustion is a form of oxidation, but it's a specific type, so we classify it as combustion. Oxidation reactions can be very simple, as shown in the first two, or they can be more complex as shown in the third. I wouldn't ask you to predict the products of these three reactants here. That would be too difficult to do. But I will ask you to predict products of simple oxidation reactions when you have an element reacting with oxygen gas. It can be a metal, or you'll see here it can be a non-metal. The simplest approach here is that oxidation is a form of a synthesis reaction where I'll show you those in a minute, but they are similar in that you simply combine those elements to generate a compound forming that compound by your basic formula writing rules. So, for example, in this first one, calcium plus oxygen gas, what you're looking at here you're going to put the two elements side by side how do you know that's going to form an ionic compound? You have a metal and a non-metal. Good. Good. Calcium is in group 2, so it has a 2 plus charge. Oxygen, group 16, 2 minus, as we've talked about since the beginning of the second nine weeks. Your product is calcium oxide. Make sure You formula write the product. And then you just balance it very simply. The second one is a little trickier because it involves a transition element.
but there's really more than one correct answer. If I were forming rust, rust is iron three oxide. So you would get this. But if they didn't tell you, you could form iron two oxide as such. So either of those would be fine. I wouldn't give you a transition element in a synthesis reaction because there could be so many possible answers. It would just be confusing to you. In any event, you would balance that off as you've learned previously. Make sure you formula write the products in oxidation reactions. Most of these that you're likely to see will involve a metal and oxygen gas forming an ionic compound. But if you have a non-metal reacting with oxygen gas, you'll form a covalent compound. And there could be more than one right answer there as well. In this section, same directions, classify the following reactions, predict the products, and balance the equations. Let's take a look. In this first one, we've got magnesium reacting with oxygen gas. We know this is an oxidation reaction. How do we predict the products? Put them together and formula right. Magnesium oxide balance. Is it clear how we got the product? You understand why there's no coefficient of two? I'm sorry, no subscript of two. There is a coefficient of two. You understand why there's no subscript of two? Okay. In the second one, we've got sodium reacting with oxygen gas. This too would be oxidation. What would the product be? Sodium oxide. balancing should be very straightforward in this type of reaction. The next one says lithium reacts with oxygen gas. When they give you an element, in almost every case it's just the chemical symbol. The only exception is if you have a diatomic element. Do not put a charge on a metal because you're talking about the solid metal. Don't put a subscript on a metal. It's not the ion, it's the actual metal. React it with oxygen gas. What would the products be? The fourth example is a little bit different because it says carbon. For the first time, we have a nonmetal. We just write the chemical symbol, reacts with oxygen gas, and in most instances, this will generate carbon dioxide. If you had very limited oxygen supply, you would make carbon monoxide but that's not something you have to differentiate at this level.
all of these are examples of oxidation reactions and you need to classify in order to predict. Once you predict, you can balance. Questions on combustion or oxidation at this point? So far so good? Okay, the other two are gonna be very simple today as well. Oxidation reactions are actually a specific class of synthesis reactions. In a synthesis reaction, you are going to combine two elements or more than two elements or simple compounds to form a compound that's more complex than what you started with. For your purposes, I'm going to keep it really simple where if you're asked to predict, you'll simply be combining two elements to generate a compound. You can think about synthesis like a marriage. Boy meets girl. They get married and form a couple. A metal reacts with a non-metal to form an ionic compound. For example, sodium a metal reacts with chlorine gas, a non-metal, to form ionic compound sodium chloride, which is table salt. Oxidation reactions are examples or a specific type of synthesis reaction. We classify them as oxidation. They are a specific category of synthesis. Same directions every time, classify, predict the products, balance the equation, and you're going to work these just as you did with the oxidation reactions. In the first example, it says sodium reacts with fluorine gas. It's written out for you as such. Synthesis, you'll process just like oxidation. You put the elements side by side. Sodium group 1, 1 plus charge for the ion, fluoride group 17, 1 minus for the ion as we talked about first semester. Formula write your product and balance the equation as we learned earlier this week. In the second example, you have calcium reacting with nitrogen gas. Again, you must, must, must formula right your product. How did I get that product? The calcium's two plus, the two drops down, the nitrite is three minus, the three drops down. And then you can balance that equation. And again, to classify these because it did ask for it, these are all synthesis reactions. The next problem says lithium reacts with solid iodine. How do we write lithium? Li subscript? No. Charge? No, no, no. How do we write solid iodine? I2. I2. Good. Brinkelhoff series. Careful. Um, you don't have to indicate the state of matter unless they ask you to. But that's a good point. What do you form? Just like that? Yep. All right. The last one says magnesium reacts with chlorine gas. How would we write that one?
What does that make? Like that? You got it. And that's balanced already. So those are synthesis reactions. Typically, elements or simple compounds react to form one substance that is more complex than what you started with. So this is synthesis in this direction. And now we're going to work it backward. So synthesis forward, but if the reaction went backward, you would be breaking things up, and that's known as decomposition. And that's the last class we'll talk about today. Decomposition is going to be very easy to recognize. It is very challenging to predict. I will not ask you to predict the products of decomp this year. I simply want you to recognize decomposition reactions. You don't have to predict. Very tricky to do, but you need to recognize. They are very easy to recognize. In a decomposition reaction, a compound is going to break down into two or more simpler substances. Most decomposition reactions are endothermic. It requires energy to break something up. This is similar to divorce. You start with a couple, and then you go your separate ways. You will recognize decomp because you will have one reactant and more than one product. Your products will be elements or compounds. They will not be ions. Be careful there. There's a distinction we'll go through. You can break up molten sodium chloride using electricity. Essentially, you melt the compound into liquid sodium and chlorine gas. It does require a lot of energy and is performed at very high temperatures. Here are two examples of decomp reactions. How can you recognize these as decomposition right away? Because it has one reactant, more than one product, and you have simpler substances, not ions, from one compound. Dissociation, we'll talk about Later in the quarter, I'll mention it here, because you also have one reactant, but here all you're doing is dissolving the substance in water, and you basically generate ions. The ions that comprise the ionic compounds, you can see each ion here. For example, if you dissolve table salt in water, you get sodium ion, aqueous, dissolved in water, chloride ion. Sodium sulfate, you get sodium ion, you get sulfate ions, aqueous dissolved in water, but that's dissociation. We've worked through four classes. We've got combustion, we've got oxidation, we've got synthesis, and decomposition. I think the challenge really comes here where you mix them all together and you want to see if you can tell the reactions apart based solely on their reactants. It's asking you to classify the reactions, predict the products if necessary, and balance the equations. And take a few minutes to try and do this section I will reveal the answers, and then I will tell you what classwork problems you can do for the remainder of the class in order to really perfect this concept and prepare you well for your exam next week. Give it a shot. I'll reveal the answers when you tell me.
in an equation? No, you always add an equation. You never subtract. You never have a subtraction substance in a chemical equation. That's actually a really good point. It comes up later in the year, and even if you have an exothermic reaction, you still add the energy to the appropriate side. The fact that you add it to the right side of the equation indicates that it's exothermic. It comes up later in the year. There's a lab we do on um, chemical equilibrium, and I remember some of the kids trying to subtract things, and you never do. Yeah, that's a good point. You ready to go over it? Yeah. Yes? Okay, let's take a look. See if you have the classification right, the prediction correct, as well as the balancing. And if you have all that correct, you're really on the right track. And I'll tell you which problems that you can do on your classwork to really cement this concept down. Okay? Okay. So hopefully you have some understanding of the first four classes of types of chemical reactions, combustion, oxidation, synthesis, and decomp. Next time we'll get into single and double replacement reactions. They're a little trickier, but I feel very confident that you'll be successful with it.